Hi again, everyone. It's great to be with you again. I'm Pastor John here at Napanee Baptist Church in Southern Ontario. It's Wednesday, August the 18th. It's great to be with you again, and I'm glad you could join me. All we do during these visits with the pastor is we visit around the Word of God, and we just have a reading for the day, and then we comment a little bit, and we pray, and we commit our day to the Lord. So I'm glad you could join me. If you can take your Bibles and turn to the New Testament to 2 Thessalonians, the book of 2 Thessalonians. And our reading is chapter 1 of 2 Thessalonians. So let's read the word together. It says, Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more. And the love of you, and the love all of you have for one another is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. Verse 5, all this is evidence that God's judgment is right, and as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. Verse 8, he will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shout out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. On the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who have believed. This includes you because you believe our testimony to you. Verse 11, with this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. Verse 12, we pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Paul, of course, talks about eternity here. He talks about uh, punishment for the unrighteous, uh, everlasting destruction, he says, for those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's very much a scriptural truth. And he talks about the second coming, the day when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire and in glory. And he says in verse 10, On the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who believe. That's the day that we look forward to as believers in Christ. That is our steadfast hope. That is the hope that we have uh, in the second coming, that Christ will come back in glory. And then Paul says, with this in mind, with this hope in mind, in verse 11, he says, we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. So with that in mind, in light of the second coming, Paul is praying for these people, these Thessalonians, that God would make them worthy 
of his calling, that they would live up to their calling, to their position as believers, and that God would give them power, that they would be able to live up to their calling, that every one of their desires for goodness uh, would be fulfilled and would be brought to fruition, he says. Your every deed prompted by faith that God would help help you and help us to do his will and to do what is right. And then Paul says in verse 12, we pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. In all that we say and think and do, Paul says, the ultimate aim is to bring glory to, to God, to the way we live and the way we act and the way we talk. It's all to bring glory to the name of Christ. May God help us to do that today uh, in light of his promises and in light of that second coming that glorious hope uh, that we have uh, that would prompt us to live the way God wants us to live. So let's just pray and commit ourselves to him for this day. Father in heaven, we thank you again for this opportunity to come together in this way, to read your word, and then to pray and to commit our day to you. Lord, we thank you that you are a great God, we thank you that you have given us everything we need to live for you. That's what Paul is saying here. And especially in light of our eternal hope, in light of the second coming, that glorious hope that we have, we have the power and the enabling from you, O oh God, to do what's right and to do your will. May you help us to do that today. Keep us faithful, we pray, as individuals and as a church family. Keep us together and help us to keep serving you and to be uh, willing servants to do what is right and to uh, keep moving on for you. So Lord, we just commit this day to you. I thank you for each person watching, and we thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.